then you Yes, you can take this world its wealth and riches. I don't need a slave. It's my desire to live for Him. Yes, you. Good evening. How's everyone this evening? Good. Good to see you, everyone. Before we get to the uh, our prayer request tonight, <clears throat> excuse me. I got I got one announcement that I'd like to let everybody know. They're not everybody here, but one of the, one of the contestants that was here at the play day by Saturday won first and came in second. Two other events. Uh, young lady is. I spoke to her yesterday, and she wanted to thank everyone that was part of the play day for all the hard work, keeping the arena up, having the tractor out ready to roll, ready to drag when it needed it. From everybody from inside the arena, outside the arena, she wanted to thank y'all. We we did a a really good job with that one, and she was very thankful to be here. So, you want to take much of Chet's time uh, on our prayer list, prayer request for tonight. <clears throat> we have uh, Jimmy Swink, Kyle Burris, Connie Fraber. Jamie Ship, David Smith, Eric Horton, J.K. Smith, Susan and Robert Smith, Edith Harbolt, Cassandra Shadell, family of Sandy Parker, and I want to put on there Charlie Turner's mother. Heart surgery yesterday and today. Danny Freeman, uh, one of his brothers passed away earlier this week. The Latrell family, and Joyce Berryman. Do we have any more that we'd like to add? Yes, ma'am. I have a co worker, Jackson Hawkins. Her and her family, my dad, her son, and her son, and her girlfriend were murdered.
Yes, Ms. Harris. We'll put Charles on with that too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do do we have any more? Yes, ma'am, Miss Mary. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for blessing this day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for letting us be here. Lord, we thank you for all that, all that we're able to do because of you. Lord, Brother Chet tells us you know, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to get out of bed in the morning if it weren't for you. We thank you for that. And we just have to many more times. Lord, we, uh, we don't know each and every one on this prayer request list tonight. We don't know each need. But we do know that the list is long and the need is many. You know, we're going we're gonna to put these petitions at you, Lord, that, that your will will be done. And that each and every one on this list, Lord, that, that know you, the ones that don't know you, that you will you will go into their heart and their mind and let them know that, that they are loved and they are wanted and they are needed. Lord, we just ask that uh, all your blessings be bestowed upon them. Each need is different, each person is different. Your will will be done. We know that. Lord, lead us and guide us as we go about our service this evening. Be with each one of us. You know, be with Brother Chet this evening. See, uh, he brings our message to us. You know, give him the words to let us hear. And let us hear those words. Not only hear them, but go out and do those words, Lord. You know, we just ask that you watch out over all of our law enforcement, all of our military as they go out and they stand in that gap between good and evil. Lord, bring each and every one of them home safely at the end of their shift, at the end of their tour. Lord, again, be with us and lead us and guide us and keep us safe on our way home this night. All things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Chief. All right, everybody left. And the lady that made it, she's not here tonight, but it's Joan Dial, who has the dog Molly that comes here. And she wants to make sure that we get the money. She says she has a special needs granddaughter and stuff, and she understands, and she wanted to make sure that she was able to help with a handy capable, and this is her way. Um, she, believe it or not, she wants a dollar per ticket and six tickets for five dollars. You can see any youth member, we're going to pass, uh, also we got some other people that's asked, or if you want to sell tickets, let me know, and we'll make sure you get them. But uh, if you haven't had a chance, you need to check it out. It's beautiful, and like I said, it's hand-woven. So, thank you. Amen. That'll, that'll raise some money for our, our, yeah, our kiddos. We appreciate Candy Cake for Rodeos and awesome outreach. Amen. Amen. Last year was my first time to be a part of it, so it was, it was, it was, 
Unbelievable. But anyway, that's handmade, so it's just a dollar a ticket. So we'll, if you want to get some and sell some too, we uh, we prepare it already for for October. It'll be here before we know it. Amen. We'll run over some quick announcements. Don't forget the communication cards if you do have a. On Wednesday nights, it's a little easier to call out our prayer requests, but on Sundays when everybody's here, be sure to fill those out if you have a prayer request or something. We uh, got a couple this weekend about becoming members, somebody else wanting to be baptized, so don't quit using those cards. It's our way of communicating with you, and uh, if there's something that you would want to be a part of that we may announce. Uh, uh, our play day Saturday, again, I talked about that Sunday, but it did go really well. appreciate Mr. Tommy for helping get the ground we worked that ground over and it, it did it did help so I'm, I'm thankful for that and everything everything went good it took a lot of a lot of volunteers but everything was was very smooth and a, a follow-up on the young lady that had the accident our first play day audrey uh, they're friends of ours and customers so uh, audrey's doing really good she's just waiting to get her cast off her her uh, her head and all is healed up doing good so i'm talking to Dwayne. And uh, they're going to plan a trip down one Sunday. So it'll be a walking testimony in church. Amen. Amen. So we'll, we'll, we'll surprise you one Sunday when their schedule fits in. If you are going to go to Beulah on April the 19th, uh, put that on a communication card and drop it in the buckets at the exit doors or the, the wooden churches. You kind of get the number. We are going to try to run a, the bus and the van. If anybody wants to take advantage of that, we'll get a little sign up for that. Miss Amy, Phoebe, and her husband will I'll drive the bus for us, and I think that's it. Other than be sure and uh, pray over our uh, rodeo, uh, Jasper Pro Rodeo is coming up uh, May 8th and 9th. We're going to have a leadership meeting this Sunday. We're going to talk quite a bit about it. And the next Sunday. I think we'll have a church-wide meeting. So anybody that we're, we're getting sponsors and stuff, so you may, we'll make that list available this coming Sunday, and we'll have a meeting the next Sunday. But if you want to look over that list, and, you say, hey, I know somebody that works here at this place. I'll talk to them personally, so feel free to do that. But uh, we're excited about it. We'll get to plant a lot of seed of the gospel. Can I get a good amen? amen. And T-shirts, don't forget, Save the Goats, the U-T-shirts, the Sale Barn. They're having a, uh, let me read this, March 12th, JC3 Sale Barn. That'd be not tomorrow, a week from tomorrow. Is that right? Yes. The, the 12th? Okay. Okay. Um, Having a ladies' night out from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Painting with with prayer. Uh, painting starts at 5:30, $35. Paying the sale barn before church on Sunday. And I believe that is all of our announcements. Uh, service went good. And baptisms went good Sunday. Amen. That, that was good. And that was some good stew. What what what'd y'all call that, cowboy? Cocktail soup. I thought you said something about cowboy stew. All I know is it was good. Amen. <laughs> we came out of that meeting, me and Mr. Marvin. We adjourned that meeting. We was looking at each other, kind of rubbing our belly. We was getting, you know, had to get together with the rodeo meeting. I said, man, we're going to go out of here. So we, it was really good. So we appreciate the ladies and everybody that volunteers and sets up chairs down tables and all that stuff. We greatly appreciate it. Don't forget the parade. Mr. Eldridge and his sister done a good job. If you know anybody that wants to be a part, of the parade. I think that's all of our announcements. Let's uh, have a word of prayer and we'll crack open the word. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We ask you to speak to our hearts. And Lord, may we receive your word tonight and leave here different than we came. Lord, without you, I can't speak. And Lord, we can't pay attention. And we can't hear. But Lord, you can, you can speak through me and Lord, you can make our hearts good soil to receive the seed of your word tonight. And may we leave here different. Lord, may we be doers of the word, not hearers only. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Let's give our uh, Facebook viewers a hand clap. We do have a lot of people. I always want you to feel welcome. Some people, uh, I talked to a guy the other day, lives in Virginia, that watches our program. So you never know. Uh, somebody from New York. So it, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, but those that can drive here, it's, it's well worth being here in person. But if you can't, we want to welcome you. Is our computer down tonight, Miss Cheryl, or is it resurrected? All right, is it up? Never know about computers. Now, I want to show you a picture here. I always talk about the man that led me to Christ, you know, Pastor Ron. Now, on the left, that's me. But uh, my cousin that was here Sunday, Danny, that, 
He's on the right. But that is Pastor Ron. He was the man that led me to Christ in Trinity, Texas, in no gravel parking lot. He's in the Cowboy Hall of Fame there at Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame in Fort Worth. And uh, Pastor Ron went on to be with the Lord just a few short years ago. But he was uh, he was kind of my mentor. It's kind of funny how God used him. I didn't know the desire to, to be a cowboy was much more than just a personal desire. It was a desire that God put in my heart. And God used the cowboy church in the Western world to share the gospel with me. And many of us may have that same testimony or similar, but Ron was a neat guy. He was a PRCA judge. So when I would enter those pro rodeos, we would, wherever he was judging, I would uh, <laughs> enter that rodeo there. We'd ride together. We always, uh, he was a good man. Taught me how to trim my first horse. And he's the one that had me preach my first little four-minute message. And I had to share about I was nervous. I, I was I all choked myself with a wire cord. And back then, the mic, there wasn't any wireless ones. But anyway, I wanted y'all to see Pastor Ron. Danny actually sent me this picture last night. I've asked my cousin. We grew up. We're 10 years apart. But our mothers were two of the finest women uh, we've ever known. And all you got to do is ask us if you don't believe us. We'll tell you. But we had two great mothers. And uh, they were praying mothers. So... I've asked Danny to come back one Sunday and me and him uh, share a little bit, let him give a little testimony about our lives and how God's used us. And, and uh, we're some great friends and talk all the time. He actually lives in Beulah. So I'm not the only one from Beulah, all right? This, uh, if you have your Bible, we'll go to Hebrews chapter 11. We'll find our place. How many of you blessed tonight? Yeah. Y'all look a little sleepy out there. I do have a water pistol. I'll squirt you a little bit. <laughs> Spray you with water. If I catch you not saying amen, I'll, I'll hit you. What were those things the kids play with? They kind of bubble up and it shoots the water about 50 feet. I, I can, if I catch you dozing, I, I'll hit you a little bit. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Last week we got started on this. Learning how to walk by faith, but we all know that the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. But that's easy said, but it's a little harder done. And just because I walked by faith yesterday doesn't automatically mean I'm going to walk by faith today, right? right? You know, I may have been there, I may have it going on on Monday, but man, something may hit you hard. Amen? Anybody ever been uh, gut punched with life? You know, something where everything's going good, man, you take a shot. And we all deal with those things. But those things do not take God by surprise. They take us by surprise, right? Anybody? I mean, we, I, we're, we can relate to one another. Things come along in life that you didn't plan for, right? You didn't expect it to happen. Everything was going good and, and something comes up. So that's just life. They're going to happen. But circumstances change us sometimes. Sometimes circumstances change our attitude. Now, we all got perfect attitudes in here. <laughs> a couple have been down. are like, oh boy. Now, but circumstances can affect our attitude. They can affect our mood. <laughs> Amen. But the cool thing is, no matter what happens in my life, it's never going to take God by surprise. Amen. Might take me by surprise. Might knock me on my back. I'm knocked out. I'm KO'd. But God says, I nah, just wait till nine and a half and I'll raise you up. Amen. Amen. And we may feel like we're flat on the ropes and knocked out. But God is never taken by surprise. Nothing ever catches him off guard. He is there. And if we trust him and we walk by faith, he'll take us through anything we face in life. Now, when I got out of Bible school, I thought I knew everything. Anybody ever been there when you're young? I got out of Bible school, and I thought, man, there ain't nothing in life that I don't know now. I done been to Bible school. I, I've read my Bible. And, man, I, I, I've got it figured out. <laughs> One time they made us read a book in Bible school. It was about how many ministers burned out and quit. And I just laughed at that, you know. And then after 20-something years of ministry, you're like, 
man, there's a little something to this. You know, you think you know everything. I remember when I got out of Bible school, I, I didn't know much, but it's kind of like getting out of horseshoe in school. They say, when you graduate from horseshoe in school, you've got just enough experience to go work under somebody else and apprentice under them, right? And that's probably true in a lot of things. If, if there's probably not a carpenter school, but if, if I went and watched James work at carpentry skills, you know, for a week or two, I, I might know a little something or kind of how to do it, but I'm not going to be prepared. i got to work and learn how to do it. But when I got out of Bible school, I thought I, I don't really think I thought I knew everything, but I had a lot to learn, to say the least. Amen? Amen. And we're still learning. If you're still alive, you're still learning. Amen? Amen. And God's not done with us, so we're going to take this journey about walking by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 it says, faith is the confidence of what we hope for will actually happen. So when I'm trusting God for something, faith gives me the confident expectation that it will happen. And how do I know what I can trust God for? It's what is in His Word. If His Word promises me peace, thank God, I can say, Lord, I need your peace. And by faith, I promise you, He will give you the peace or the strength that you need. It gives us assurance about things that we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed by God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Now we'll jump down to verse 7. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. <laughs> He obeyed God. Let's say it together. He obeyed, he obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. <laughs> by his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. How many of you know it took a lot of faith for Noah to build an ark? God, we talked about this last week. God tells him it's going to rain, but it never rained before, so I'm sure Noah thought, what is rain? But by faith, he built the ark. Can you imagine? Let's just say Noah grew up in a neighborhood. We're just going to make this up. Can you imagine how it would look? Noah grows up in a neighborhood, and every day, he's out there building on this ark, nailing boards up, right? And a man, a father and his son walk by, and they look over there, and the little boy says, Dad, what's that guy doing? And he says, I... Don't, don't, don't worry about him, son. He's crazy. <laughs> Why is he crazy, Dad? Well, he's building some huge boat. And they say that it's going to rain. The little boy says, Dad, what is rain? He says, I don't know. But that's what he says. It's going to rain. So he's building this ark. Can you imagine how much through the years that Noah was made fun of? Probably looked at like, oh, yeah, that's old Noah. That's just, that's, you know. Let him think what he wants to think. But yet Noah obeyed God. He was obedient to what God told him to do. Can I get a good amen? amen? And so I think about my life when I went to Bible school. And I learned a lot of things at Bible school. Most of I learned a lot of stuff in class. I learned a, a, my favorite class was soul winning. Uh, but a lot of my experience in Bible school was in your face. I mean having to trust God for my next meal. Anybody ever been there? How many of you ate beans and rice? And then rice and beans. Remember on Wednesday we throw in a little cornbread. It's a big deal. Now let's go down to verse 8. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance. The rest of that verse says, He went... Let's say it together. He. Amen. So what did God tell him to do? He told him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. So he went by what? Hey, he had to trust God. You ever notice God didn't give you the whole road map? You ever been going down the road with your GPS? How many of you now use a GPS sometimes when you drive? And they're awesome. And sometimes when we take the wrong turn, what does it say? Rerouting. 
Don't you know God's GPS has to reroute on us sometimes? He's like, all right, son, go up here to the fort and take a left. What do we do sometimes? Now, just me, probably not you. We take a right. And God's like, reroute him. He's not done with us. He can get us back on track. Thank God for that. Amen? But we, we have to walk by faith. And Abraham obeyed God. When the Lord told him to leave home and go to another land, he would give him his inheritance. So he went, not knowing where he was going. Now when I think about this, that brings me to where I was last week. I'm going to finish the rest of my story about Bible school. Remember how we talked about the $10 velvet couch? Y'all look a little sleepy. Let me just ask y'all a question. How many of you glad you're not in jail? All right. How many glad you're not in the hospital? One more time. How many glad you're not in jail? Amen. How many glad you're not in the hospital? Amen. So we got a lot to be thankful for. Amen? Amen. Years ago, for years, when I was in Nacogdoches, I'd get up. Everybody would be a little full of a taco soup or something. You know, not any of us. But they'd be a little full of taco soup. And I'd just say, how many glad you're not in jail, man? At our church in Nacogdoches, it was, it was a lot of people glad they weren't in jail. Amen? <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of people that spent a little time there. We always used to say at Jubilee it was a chicken soup church. It was the only church in town in Nacogdoches that you could lock your keys in the car and not have to spend any money at G&G &G Lock and Safe. So there's 10 to 20 people that can get in your car before you get out there. No use locked. <laughs> but I am thankful that I'm not in jail today. Amen? I'm thankful that I'm not in the hospital. I'm thankful that God loves us, each one of us. They've got a plan for your life. Kind of lackadaisical in our walk with him. Amen? Yeah. Thank you for the enthusiasm. We're all thinking. And you know, we, we face things in life, but none of this changes God. It changes us. I got a call this morning early. My youngest daughter had to go for some tests and, and do a little procedure, so I had to figure out what we was going to do, you know, got to try to help out to get some, get some dental work done, and so you think, man, what, I got to try to help, what's the right thing to do, just for a minute, that just overwhelmed me just a little bit, amen, how do I handle this, I want to be a good dad, I want to be a good leader, be a good example, I want to make a good choice, I want to, how's the best way to handle this situation, has any of you ever had to make a decision on a situation that wasn't always easier, what's the right thing, and you want God to lead you to do the right thing. Sometimes we don't know the right thing. Anybody else in here don't always know what to do? <laughs> if any man lacks wisdom, let him, what does James say? Ask of God. Let's say it together. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and without reproach. So that means that God will give us the wisdom to make good choices. And even if we make the wrong choice, he'll push rerouting on the button and still get us back on track. Amen. Isn't that awesome? So basically what I'm telling you is when you're walking with Jesus, you're on the winning team. Amen. Amen. Worst case scenario, we depart this life and we spend eternity in heaven. Can I get a good amen? amen. One day, we're going to cross over to the other side. But in the meantime, our job is to be a witness for him and to trust him and walk by faith. So Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land. When God put it on my heart to go to Bible school, my family, as I mentioned last week, they thought, man, he's lost his mind. Left the prison system, the retirement program, the insurance, had all these benefits. God put it on my heart, a 23-year-old young man, to go to Bible school. I had only been a Christian for about a year and three months. They almost didn't accept me in a Bible school. They wanted me to, you know, walk with the Lord a little bit longer, but I talked to them, and they said, man, come on, we're excited about what you're doing. I told them about the Cowboy Church, and so I ended up going off to Bible school. I didn't know the book of generations from the book of revolutions. <laughs> you know? I didn't know much, but I was excited about God. I was ready to learn, and I learned a lot in Bible school. I had to put on my tie. I remember my tie. You know, had somebody tie, and I said, Actually, my brother walked me through it on the phone one night. The first time, it was horrific. <laughs> my tie looked like some kind of clown suit. 
So then I asked a student to help me tie a tie. <laughs> Went off to Bible school, and little did I know, I learned a lot in the classroom, but half of my education, if not 60%, was God was teaching me how to walk by faith. Because that time, Pastor Ron, he, he was real excited about uh, rodeo, and I had kind of figured out how to halfway stay on the bull and started doing good. He encouraged me, said, get your car. I just went to amateur rodeos. I remember coming to big 50-head bull riding, Jasper, Nacogdoches, that used to go to view in different places, just kind of amateur stuff, but I'd, I'd always draw a little check. And he said, you know, you need to get your car, get your PRCA car. And so I did <laughs> go to Crockett and win the hometown rodeo, fill my car one weekend, and then so I started right in the middle of all this, God speaks to me to go to Bible school. I mean, he really put it on my heart. I Man, I had some buddies, even Danny, my cousin, they was like, man, we don't want to see you. You know, we want to see you continue to get on rodeo. Travel, hit the road, do what you got to do. And yet I went off to Bible school. And right in the middle of Bible school, I rodeoed the first year of Bible school in 1994. And in 1995, Man, I was riding the best I had done. Uh, you know, nowadays these bulls buck so much better, I wouldn't even, they'd probably throw me back on the back of the chute. But, <laughs> man, I was riding well, and I went to a rodeo north north of Tulsa about an hour, and I remember going that night. My daughter was just born, drawing a black bullet, really buck, kicked, jerked people down. I got me a new bull rope. I always rode with a little bitty baby nine, a little bitty thin rope. I couldn't hang on to those little fat ropes they have nowadays. They just started making. So I get on this black bull, kicks out of there. I remember thinking, man, what am I off doing here? You know, my kids at home, and I get on this bull, and man, he bucks. He jerks a rope out of my hand about four seconds into the ride. Boom, he bucked. Kicked over his head, but he jerked the rope out of my hand. So I ride him like this. I can't get off of him. He's kicking too hard. I mean, he set you up there, so I'm riding him with like this, and I find the spot and get off. And it was just like the Lord put it on my heart that I was done. Road good, 25 years old. <clears throat> Came back, rolled my rope up, put it in my rigging bag, and went home and quit. Never got on another bull. But it was just, that was a phase in my life. God used that to reach me through rodeo and the Man, my cousin and everybody, they was a little bit frustrated with me because I just quit at 25 years old. But I, I had run my course, and God had a different plan for me, and sure enough, he did. I get out of Bible school, go start a church from scratch, and, and the rest is history. And here I am today, many years later, still doing my best to preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. But had I not, to quit riding bulls, I... Gave my stuff away. I was dumb. If I had it to do over again, I'd have kept all of it. I finally got my chaps back. The Lord had mercy on me. But I had to walk my faith because that's all I knew. I, that was my dreams. But God did begin to change me a little bit. And he put it on my heart. And I, I laid it down that night and was fully at peace with it and went on and did what God had before me. There's different seasons in our life. Amen? And I had to do that by faith, but to fully trust him. I trusted. I, I, I knew my father enough that he wouldn't lead me astray. You ever seen a little kid get up on the counter and, I'm going to ask James to come over here and catch me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you ever seen a little kid jump off the counter? What do they do? They smile and they, whoo, they jump. How do they do that? They trust that you're going to catch them. Cross their mind. That you're not going to catch them. Amen? Yeah. And it, really and truly, why can't we do that with our father? If he's going to catch you, we got to trust him. And we need to be like the little kids, not do something stupid, but I'm talking about having trust in him. He put it on my heart. And I rolled my rigging bag up, gave it all away, and went on about my deal. And I enjoyed it. God let me race some bucking bulls years later. But every step of our walk is by faith. It was by faith that I laid that down. And God took me into another season of my life. But while I was in Bible school, God taught me a lot of things. I mentioned last week 
that I know what weak cheese is. Mm -hmm. How many of you know what weak cheese is? You can get baby formula with wick. I, I've raised the kids in Bible school that was so tough on wick. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I'm thankful the journey that I did. And I told you that my brother came to the graduation and went to the hotel room after seeing the house. Remember the skirting I put on our house? Tar paper with shovels and rocks. Cold wind. And, and I'll never forget the, the drop cloth I put over the window when the wind blew, boy, to come out in that old hole, old mobile home, you know. And think about all those things, but yet God was, he was testing me. He was watching me to see. Was I going to trust him? Now, we started out on a little, little bitty travel train. Everybody say itty bitty. Yeah. About 18 foot long. <laughs> Two kids. So, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep us warm. I wasn't used to that cold weather. And then I moved up to the, we were, it was like a Taj Mahal. It was a mobile home. Yeah, it had a few windows out. Yeah, it had a tar paper skirt. And my brother came. And he literally went and wept and said, I can't believe I let my brother live like that. He, he didn't understand. We were well taken care of. God took good care of me and my family. Amen? Amen. We had more than we needed. Only 37 cents more. But we had more than we needed. How many of you like it when God gives you a little cushion? <laughs> Lord, I'm thankful you provide. But give me a few, a few dollars in the bank. Don't get it down in the cents with the... With, with all my money to the right of the period, we want some on the left of that little dock. But I learned how to trust him at that time. The little old trailer. I used to stop at the QT. Remember, Miss Sandy, QTs are all over Tulsa. Quick trips. I'd get the 99 cent hot dog. Amen. Eat lunch. Get in with Mr. Gary, the fair, and we'd take off. I told you the other day about our two men and Dean went to Bible school together. He grew up talking in prayer. Our dogs got in a fight. And these, these, these people, they come in on a jet for a big prominent meeting in Tulsa. And they come out to our place. Here we are starving half to death. Our trucks were broke down. It was in the summertime. And back then, we'd get so hot, there was no shade where we were. It was out in the cow pasture. It was in August. And we were working on our trucks, so we had our shirts off. That's a scary sight too, right? But now, what I mean by that, we're little skinny bull riders. We got grease all over our chest, all over our back. We're covered in grease. Our trucks are up with the tires off. And they, they probably think, oh, dear Lord, where are we going? We all from a 99 cent hot dog. They, they, they turned that down. They said, the blue velvet caps. Remember the blue velvet caps? I went to North Tulsa. And I gave $10 for a couch. And I talked about it last Wednesday, but when you sat in it, you had to be one heck of an athlete to get out of it because your butt barely hit the carpet. The springs was wore out. But it's all I had, all we could afford. When you lived in an 18-foot travel trailer, a blue velvet couch was nice. And it had some room. My dog had learned how to walk within two days. There was room to walk. All right. <laughs> when we moved in, it was cold. They come over, and then Dean's, Blue, a red healer gets in a fight with my border collie, and I preach on this again because I'm proud that my border collie beat up his red healer. All right. <laughs> Dean looked out the window and said, I can't believe that faith is whooping tests. He was mesmerized that my little border collie got the best of his dog. Needless to say, everybody left. We laughed about it. But God was working on me during those times. He was teaching me to walk by faith. Just like Abraham. He obeyed God. And I'm going to tell y'all something funny about my buddy named Dean. Y'all want one more Bible school story? It was some, it was some hard times. It was, I got paid $7 to pull the shoes and clench the shoes for Gary. He was president of the Oklahoma Affairs Association. And I could only work from after lunch on. But Gary kind of did like I try to do to people now. When somebody worked with me, when I got calls, and he got calls, he would give me the accounts. Once he taught me enough that he felt like he could turn me loose. And so by the time I left Tulsa, I actually could have stayed there. I had a pretty good business going. But I knew God had a different plan for my life. Amen. 
And I went on and did what I felt like he put on my heart. But God, through Bible school, taught me a lot of things. One time Dean, he's two years younger than me. Now Dean was, he'd come to the cowboy church and used to ride bulls. And Dean will verify this. He says there is a bull rider and there are bull getter owners. Now there's a difference, right? <laughs> Dean says he was the bull getter owner. He just rode a few years, but we are great friends to this day. He went on to do a lot of cowboy ministry up in Idaho. He lives back right outside of Lufkin now. But Dean was in the Marine Reserves, and they had this Marine ball. It was I've never been to a Marine ball. How many have been anything been to something like that? It was fancy. I, I didn't know much about it, but. He said, I, I, I've got to go to the Marine Ball. And everybody say broke. Right. How many of you know what it means when they say, I'm so broke, I couldn't buy a set of eggs? <laughs> we was tight. It was tight. And I had an old Ford diesel truck. I mean, it was a big deal. One time I went to Beggs, Oklahoma. You know where Beggs is when you're going up Oklahoma? Uh, if you go up through Paris. And I was going up through Beggs, Oklahoma, and the sign said, Open Rodeo. And I had just a few dollars, and so I came back the next night. I found out what the entry fees were. Back then, it was $50. And I had about 100 on me, so I put up that $50, and the Lord blessed me to be able to ride a bull. He turned back real nice. I won $600. That was like winning the lottery in that day and time. I said, we're never going to see another poor diggy. You know what I did? I loaded up the van, put an ice chest in there. Shelby was about that long, and we went off to Cody, Wyoming. I said, I want to see that country. We won $600. We're never going to see another poor day in our lives again. <laughs> but I actually did. I'm pretty tired. I paid for the trip. I said, I got it figured out. We'll go to Cody, Wyoming, June, July, and August. They have a rodeo every night. So I'll enter the bull ride there. And I went on June the 3rd and June the 4th. So June the 3rd, I draw a big Charlet bull. It's raining, mud all over the place. Big old Charlet bull. And, and Cody, they had a cover over the bucket chutes out to about the second row of, of seats there, over the bucket chutes. So I get on this bull, left hand delivery. He jumps out there, just kind of slow motion, turns back to the left. Big old bull, weigh about 1,800 pounds. I jump off of him. Grab my chaps in the air, hold them up, boom, land on my feet, not a speck of dirt on me. And I'm straight out of Beulah, Texas. Climb up the chutes, win the bull riding that night. Now, I'd never been up north, so I didn't realize from June the 3rd it was kind of semi-cool. The next day, the bull riding gets started at sleeting sideways at 27 degrees on June the 4th. I'll never forget it. So I get on this little bull, but I, I got a ride because I had won enough money to almost get back home. I'm going to go spend my $600, all right? <laughs> so the next night I draw a little bull. He didn't buck really good. He just wallowed out through there and took off bucking and pitching and running and really running and just ran off with me. And so we're talking the arena is full of mud. So I get to the other side of the Cody Arena, the bull goes to the fence, and it's a really a no-no to grab the fence, all right? So I'm right-handed, fence is over here, goes across the arena, arena's half, cut in half, bucket shoots from the short side of the bed. So I'm thinking, man, it's so, it was freezing cold. And I didn't do cold weather well, I was too skinny. So I'm going along, I think, man, I gotta get off this bull, there's mud everywhere. So I grab the fence, but being on the right-hand side, my hand hung in a rope just enough. Then I drug me, and I landed in that wet water, and it was 27 degrees. Everybody say prayer life. Amen. <laughs> I, I promise you, when I hit that wet water, I rolled around. I didn't even know I wanted it. And straight in the shower and got into some hot water. It was 27 degrees on June the 4th. I thought, I got to get out of here. This is hell. <laughs> I don't like I died with the hell. On June the 4th, it's 27 degrees, so I take a shower, get warmed up, come out, find out, man, I won it that night. All you had to do was stay on back then, so it wasn't that hard, but anyway, I won enough money to get back home, and Dean comes to me, school's starting, he said, 
you know, I got a marine ball coming up, and he said, that old Ford truck you sold me, it had 380,000 miles on it. He said, I'm not going to take, there was a lady that was going to the Bible school. She was a daughter of some worship leader, a huge ministry around Dallas, Fort Worth. I don't remember exactly who it was, but she would pull up to school in her Mercedes Benz. Everybody say broke. <laughs> Indeed, he broke. He said, my old truck, it ain't running too good. It's backfiring. <laughs> he said, can I borrow your car? And it was a 1983 Toyota Tercel. Hatchback. <laughs> And in the hatchback, I had an anvil, a forge, anvil stand, a bunch of shoeing tools, and a set of chaps. And the front struts on that 83 your cell were wore slap out. Anybody ever rode something and the struts are wore out? When you hit a bump for the next few miles, you're going. And this, this girl, she's, she is... Anyway, she wasn't expecting to ride in the Toyota for sale, so Dean said, let me borrow the for sale. I said, you sure you want to do this? So we yanked out my forge and my anvil. So he picks this girl up in a nice part of town. He didn't say much about it the next day. I said, how'd it go? He said, dude, you didn't tell me those struts were wore out. He said, I went over that bridge over the river, Arkansas River there, and took her to that fancy ball. <laughs> And that thing never did stop bouncing that we exited five miles later going down the interstate. Two more struts and wore out. And a long story short, I said, well, how'd it go? He didn't say much. A few days later, he said, well, I'll tell you this much. She hadn't spoke to me since. <laughs> so we laughed about the old Tercel and the Marine Ball. But God taught us a lot. We had to learn to walk by faith. We didn't know always where our next meal was coming from. But God was always faithful to provide. Amen. God's in the business of taking care of his kids. Amen? Amen. Remember the little kid on the counter that jumps off? The reason they do that is they can trust us. And we should trust our Heavenly Father. We're going to finish chapter 11 next week. And uh, I might write a book, like Dean said, called The Blue Velvet Couch one day. <laughs> But, you know, we were, I was thankful for that couch, amen? amen. It, was a, it was a great thing to me because I didn't have a couch in a little bitty travel trailer. So let's be thankful for the little things. Amen. And what is it, what I always say, the Lord will come looking for you, amen? God blessed me to do things that I never thought I'd be able to do. I grew up in Beulah. I grew up shooting a 22 pistol, then moved up to a 22 rifle and didn't have any friends. I was too far back in the woods. I just grew up and uh, enjoyed life, just hunting and fishing. That's all I do. But God has stayed in a little old country boy with mud between his toes, straight out of view. And if I never get to do anything else for him, it'd be more than I ever thought I'd ever get to do. But I know this much, that God isn't through with me. He isn't through with you. That's right. He isn't through with us, so we got to learn to walk by faith just about like Noah built the ark, the, the ark. And Abraham stepped off his front porch to go to a land that he, God didn't tell him exactly where to go. He just told him to go. go. So my question is, let's be quick to obey God when he speaks to our heart. Got off that bull that night, and the Lord put it on my heart and said, lay it down. I just folded my stuff up and never looked back. The only way I've done that is because I could trust him. I knew he had more for me. Bull riding is a young man's sport, amen? amen? I wish I could still, I don't wish I could do it anymore, amen? <laughs> 10 or 15 years ago, I might wish I could have done it, but God sees things further than we do, so we obey his lead. Lord, we thank you for tonight. We ask you to lead, guide, and direct us, and may we walk by faith and trust you in everything we do in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Don't forget some tickets, raffle tickets if you want to. Can't sell some or buy one.